The Honourable Carolyn Burton. The Honourable Carolyn Burton. And I would remind members that this is the member's maiden speech and the normal courtesies apply. The Honourable Carolyn Burton. Mr Acting Deputy President, I am truly honoured to stand here in this place today on behalf of the Australian Labor Party as the new Labor member for the North Metropolitan Region. I have been bestowed with this great privilege that is to represent the electors of the North Metropolitan Region. As an elected member, I will exercise this responsibility to, to the best of my ability at all times and always work in the best interests of the people in the North Metropolitan Region. I've always been a North of the River girl from the day I was born until now. It is a place where I enjoyed my childhood, went through my teenage years and where I raised my family. I'm proud of the North and its people and to that end I will now be servicing our community through my electorate office which will be in the heart of the Dianella, Morley and Bedford area. Mr Acting Deputy President, I will now turn to the issues that drive me and which have influenced who I am and what I believe in. In doing so, I pay tribute to my parents, Don and Beryl McCulloch, because I believe that all the good characteristics I have come from them. Mr Acting Deputy President, my parents grew up in an era where all fathers worked and nearly all mothers stayed at home to take care of the children. My father worked as a slaughterman his whole life, eventually becoming a supervisor at the Midland Abattoirs. He was a hard worker with a strong work ethic, believing in a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. He worked in abattoirs in Wyndham, Derby and Broome so that he could provide for his family. Nothing was too much of a sacrifice for him, while Mum stayed at home in Perth to raise the family. Mum was a dressmaker by trade before she married, and she used to sew at home for a bit of extra money. Like my dad, she worked hard all her life to the extent that if she stayed in bed for a day, then we knew there was something seriously wrong. Both my parents taught us that nothing in life comes easy, and you have to work hard and be a good person if you are to succeed. Nothing's ever been handed to us on a plate. We had to work hard for everything we had, and like my mother and father, my husband Rick and I have tried to instill these values into our girls, Nikki and Christy. Mr Acting Deputy President, I believe in Ben Shifley's word, in the words of Ben Shifley in his Light on the Hill speech, because it truly represents what I, am, what I as a member of the Great Australian Labor Party, stand for. It's a proud moment for me as a woman, wife and mother who upholds the values of the ALP to stand in this place and read the words of the great Ben Shifley. I try to think of the Labor movement not as putting an extra sixpence into somebody's pocket or making somebody Prime Minister or Premier, but as a movement bringing something better to the people, better standards of living, greater happiness to the mass of the people. We have a great objective, the light on the hill, which we aim to reach by working for the better, better, betterment of mankind, not only here, but anywhere we may give a helping hand. And Mr Acting Deputy President, I stand before you today wanting to offer that helping hand and stand here under no illusions. And whilst I recognise that my time in this place is limited, I see no reason to hold back about the things that are of concern to my constituents and to me. There is so much to be done in the areas of mental health and the need to encourage greater investment and care and support for West Australians who have mental health issues. The Gallup Labor government introduced the state mental health strategy in 2004. This resulted in more than $600 million in extra funding being pumped into mental health in Western Australia and made this state the national benchmark. Our spend per capita on mental health is the highest in the nation, followed by the Victorians. We want our state's position as a leader to continue, and I urge the Barnett government to continue Labor's fine record in this area. I also believe we need to provide better support for our carers in our society. Further, we need to develop opportunities for our youth to participate in sport and recreation by providing better facilities for young people to be able to play sport and do more Act and be more active generally. I will strive to ensure that Labor's record in these two key areas is recognised and the Barnett government is held accountable in these areas. 
Mr Acting Deputy President, I would now like to turn to the issue of unions and the pivotal and important role they play in our society. Indeed, unions have played a large part in my life. As Rick, my husband is a union organiser with the Transport Workers Union and has been for 18 years, working tirelessly to improve and protect employer conditions. Unions have been a part of the Australian industrial landscape for over 100 years. Union leaders are community leaders and, in conjunction with the Labor Party, have been at the forefront of major industrial reforms that have resulted in improvements in pay, safety and working conditions for workers across every industry sector in this great state and nation. The entitlements that workers today enjoy, such as annual leave, sick leave, long service leave, superannuation, occupational health and safety standards and workers' compensation were all hard fought for conditions and were won by unions and their leaders for their members. The union organisation and the Australian Labor Party have and will continue to work together to create a better and more just society so that we can be a stronger and better educated nation for the future. I'm proud to be a union member and especially to be part of the TWU family. As I have mentioned, my parents and the example they set for, for our family were the reasons I became a member of the, of the Australian Labor Party. The way we were raised entrenched labour values and beliefs into me. We are a down-to-earth party composing of hard-working people that can and do make a difference in this world. We believe in an end to discrimination and a fair go for all and strive towards these goals. I have been very fortunate not, to have, not only to have worked with some incredibly talented people already within the Labor Party but also to be one of the privileged few who are able to stand in this parliament as part of the Labor Parliamentary Party. It is an honour and a duty that I will not take lightly over the coming six months. I never imagined that I would end up in this place. However, in the time that I have, I will work with the ethos of upholding and maintaining Labor beliefs and values and working towards restoring Western Australian voters' faith in our party and showing them that only Labor has the stability and vision to take WA forward. The last state election was not one that true believers will remember as one of our fondest, but what is done is done. Labor has great people and we have great ideas. Now is the opportunity for our party to listen to and engage with the community and to develop our policies and ideas. To reconnect with those voters who wanted a change so that when the opportunity to cast their vote comes again, that they will look to Labor as the party of strength, vision and opportunity for all, regardless of class, creed or gender. As one of the many female Labor members that now help constitute the West Australian Parliament, I would like to recognise the role of women in this place. For the first time in its history, the parliamentary wing of the Labor Party in the Legislative Council is now led by women in the Honourable Sue Ellery and the Honourable Kate Doust, and I congratulate them on this remarkable achievement. Of Labor's shadow cabinet, seven of the 17 shadow ministers are women, and that's a record to be proud of. And one of those senior Labor women is Liliana Ravlich, whom I'm proud to share my parliamentary office with for the short time that I have in this place. Whilst proud to be a Labor Member of Parliament, I'm even prouder to stand here as a female Labor Member of Parliament. Labor is the only party that is strong and inclusive and represents the aspirations and goals of all Australians, not just a select few men. Mr Acting Deputy President, I would now like to acknowledge all the amazing people who have helped me along the path to this great place. Rick Burton, my husband, life partner, best friend and soulmate. Rick and I met 34 years ago and together we have been through thick and thin and recently celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. Oh, excuse me. The truth is there's no one else I would rather spend those years with than my husband Rick and I look forward to many more. I acknowledge my two beautiful daughters Nikki and Christy who have been by my side all their lives and today they stand by me as I make my maiden speech. I also acknowledge Alice, my stepdaughter, and my mother, Beryl McCulloch, 
who this year celebrated her 80th birthday and is still fighting fit. Unfortunately, my beloved father, Don, Don McCulloch, is not here today as he passed away nine years ago, but I know that he's certainly here with us in spirit. I know that both my parents as Labor stalwarts are proud today as their daughter stands in this state parliament as a Labor MP to deliver her maiden speech. Mr Acting Deputy President, I am also blessed with three wonderful siblings, Graham, Gary, Deborah and my youngest brother Graham, who sadly passed away 31 years ago. They have been the best brothers and sisters anyone could ask for. They have been a strong influence on my life and they have helped make me a better person. I would also like to acknowledge the help and assistance of my best girlfriends, Kim Campbell and Nolene Smith, who have been my close confidants over many years, and I thank them. Jim and Glenis Murray have also been great friends of the Burtons for many years. As fellow unionists and strong Labor supporters, you can imagine our conversations when we get together. Jim is the Assistant Secretary with the CEPU and was the number three Labor candidate for the mining and pastoral region in the recent state election. Whilst unsuccessful, if he follows the path that I have, we may see him in this place sooner than we think. To Trevor and Michelle Scorer, who Rick and I have spent much time with over the years, I want to thank them for their support. To my colleagues from the WA Labor Party office, thank you. And I especially like to thank Sue McGivern, Fran Lane, Sue Hearn and Julie Bogle, who have toiled away for many years making our state office the peak politi political party that it is today. Thanks also to the Honourable Sally Talbot for her kindness and friendship, and I look forward to continuing this new form of working relationship. Thanks also to Bill Johnston, who in his own way has helped bring me here to stand in this chamber today. I could always say that I'm proud that Bill followed my lead and he followed me into Parliament, but that might be a bit too much. But I will say I congratulate him on his election to the Legislative Assembly. The electors of Cannington have a fine and hard-working individual as their local member. I also acknowledge my staff, Terry O'Brien, Sonia Garnett and Lynn Young. We're all going on this adventure together and we have until May 22nd next year, so let's see what we can do in this time. Mr Acting Deputy President, I would now like to pay tribute to my predecessor, the former Labor member for North Metropolitan and forever honourable Graham Giffard, who as honourable members would know represented the South and then the North Metropolitan region in this place from 2000 to 2008. I am grateful to Graham, as I would not be here without his brave decision to contest a seat in the lower house. The electors of Swan Hills have missed out on a fantastic and passionate representative. Graham left this place with great respect and I know my colleagues in the Labor Party share this view. I will strive to make the most out of this opportunity and I wish Graham and his family well in the future. In conclusion, I want to take this opportunity to again say thank you to the Australian Labor Party and to my colleagues for the opportunity to stand here today and represent Labor. When preparing for this speech, I found an old resume from when I was 15 years of age. In it, I wrote as my career objective that I was seeking a career with an organisation that was progressive in its outlook and in need of someone with my interpersonal and organisa organisational skills, obtaining a position that offers a reasonable salary, a new challenge and contact with the community is my objective. We are an organisation that is progressive in its outlook and where my, in, my personal and communicational skills can be put to use. The next six months will sh certainly offer me both a challenge as well as, con as contact with the community, and I look forward to that with great anticipation. My life has certainly changed since being elected in September, and I know it will continue to do so. This opportunity has allowed me to focus on what I can and will do in this place and how I can make a difference. I have been a passionate and active member of the North Metropolitan community for many years, and whilst I had never foreseen this path, believing it was out of reach for a working class girl from a working class background, I fully intend to embrace this great opportunity. It is my intent to fulfil my role to the best of my ability, having been born in Mount Lawley, educated in Morley, <clears throat> working and living in the Dianella Bedford community, 
I can surely, I can surely say that the northern suburbs girl has come home. Thank you.